G'day friends, it's Andrew here again from Nature's Image Photography and recently I decided it was time to learn how to use the Lumix Sync phone app to control my Panasonic Lumix G9. This is something I should have done ages ago but I kept putting it off because I thought it was going to be difficult. So if you've been wondering whether to give the app a try, keep watching and see how easy it is. Before we get started be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and if you're getting real value out of my videos you can always thank me with a coffee. You'll find the link in the description below. So if you're like me, let's say a photographer of a certain age, you might be a bit resistant to something as newfangled as an app to control your camera using your smartphone. For years you've gotten by with a simple old fashioned cable release and when that's not available you use the two second delay. So when you hear about the app your first thought is, that's just 21st century nonsense, I don't need it and I'm not wasting my time with it. And then as time goes by you begin to see some appeal in the new technology, but the next obstacle is you worry that it's going to be too high tech and difficult to use. But remember, being a photographer of a certain age, there was a time when I thought the same thing about digital cameras and then about mirrorless cameras when they came on the scene. So in this case my tipping point came with a recent thunderstorm close to home. I don't have a cable release for my G9 so I was using two second delay. I got some cool cloud shots out of it but what I really wanted was lightning. And wouldn't you know it, every time the lightning flashed was in the gaps between photos. In years past that would be a sign that it's time to get a new cable release, but this time round I decided to give the app a try. And the good news for photographers of a certain age everywhere is I'm happy to report that it's really useful and surprisingly easy to download and use. So now I'm going to show you what I've learned so far. And here's my first tip. Do your initial setup away from home, out of reach of your home Wi-Fi. The first time I tried to make this video, which is what you're watching here, I did it from home. And while the initial setup went fine, when I tried to sync up the phone and camera later, nothing worked. It seems that if your devices identify your home Wi-Fi as the source of the signal they use to sync up, then you might have trouble making it work when you're away from that signal. So if you've tried using the app but had trouble getting it to work, I would suggest you uninstall it and then restart the whole process somewhere away from home. What you're about to see is my second attempt, which I did in a park miles from home, and now everything works fine. I'm going to show you this in real time as much as possible, so you know exactly what you're in for. So step one is to go wherever you go to get your apps and look for the Lumix Sync app. It only takes a few moments to download it. Once it's installed, you open it up, and you have a few agreement and permission things to get past to enable you to use the app. Some things you'll have to do, some things are optional. And I'm not going to tell you what to do with your own phone, so just read the prompts and decide how you want to manage this initial setup stage. Finally, you'll come to some instructions on how to sync up your camera, and you can look at that now, but it makes more sense to do it when the camera is switched on, set up, and ready to go. The next step is pairing the camera to the phone. In the fourth part of the menu, that's the one with the spanner symbol, look for the Bluetooth heading. Go in there and click Set, and then Pairing, and an ID number for your camera will appear on the screen. Then it's back to the phone, and if you return to the Lumix Sync app, now it's time to go through those instructions. Apologies for this dodgy bit of footage, I didn't really think this one through. What you can't quite see is me clicking Next at the top right of my phone to progress through each instruction. At the end the app will start searching for a signal, and after keeping you waiting for just long enough to start wondering if the whole thing's going to work, it will find your camera and a matching ID number will appear on the phone. Click on that and a little conversation begins as the app and your phone get to know each other. First your phone will show you that things are starting to happen, and then the camera joins in the fun to show you that the connection is underway. Then after a bit of time, which could be anywhere from a few seconds to a couple of minutes, you'll see a confirmation that pairing is complete, and now you're ready to use the app. The home screen on the app is very simple and easy to understand. There are four main operations available and, full disclosure, I haven't uploaded photos from the camera to my phone and I'm not planning to, so I can't demonstrate that one. The function I expect to use the most is shutter remote control, so let's start there. This is the equivalent of a simple cable remote, except without the cable. Press the white button and it takes a photo. If you're in a burst mode, hold the white button down and it will keep shooting until you take your finger off. 
If you're shooting a bulb photo, press the white button and slide it down to lock it, and when you're finished slide it back up to unlock it. Press the red button to start shooting video, and press the red button again to end. It's really simple to use, and most importantly it works. There's no discernible delay between pressing the button and taking a photo, although there does seem to be just the slightest delay with video. By now I've taken dozens of photos and several little grabs of video using the app, and it has never failed to do exactly what it's supposed to do. Of course you don't have to hold the phone right next to the camera, you can shoot from further away, although I haven't even tried testing the range, which probably varies anyway depending on your mobile device. So that's the function I'm most likely to use this app for, but the other one I've spent a bit of time with is the remote shooting option, which turns your phone into a literal remote control for the camera. This is a much more powerful application and it uses Wi-Fi, so when you click that button your device first has to re-establish the Wi-Fi connection with the camera. This can take a little while, but when it's done you have a much more sophisticated interface to work with, including a real-time live view image, which means you can really see what you're shooting even if you're not standing next to the camera. In addition to being able to take a photo or shoot a video, you can also control aperture, shutter speed, ISO, and white balance, all there on the main screen. But wait, there's more. And because I didn't do a great job of this bit of video either, let's go to some screenshots I took a few days later to get a proper look at the interface and what else it can do. At the bottom of the screen you can see the big white button for taking photos and the smaller red one for video, so that's similar to what we had before. Above that you have controls for aperture and shutter speed, ISO and white balance. Above and below the image you can also see plenty of info on other camera settings like exposure mode, release mode, focus modes and more. Now if you want to change any of those extra settings, press the little three bars symbol on the top right, and a drop down menu appears which works a lot like the quick menu on the camera. Tap any of the functions on that list, and you can make your selection. You can see on the top of the list we have aspect ratio. Tap that, and you can choose your photo dimensions. Further down you have photo style. Tap that and you can press the arrows to scroll through the main style headings, and you can fine tune them using the settings below. If you want to change from RAW to JPEG, if you want to reset your burst mode options, it's all there. If you understand these functions and know how to set them on your G9, it's not hard to figure out how to set them using the app. And that's about as much as I've done with the Lumix Sync app so far, but there is more to it than what I've shown you. So while I present one final bit of demo with some slow shutter speed work at the beach, here's a few final things worth mentioning. There are four main options on the main screen, and I really only looked at two of them. I did mention that I haven't done any uploading of photos from my camera to my phone, so I can't demonstrate the import images function. The fourth box is simply called others, and in there are two other functions I haven't tried yet. One has something to do with saving camera settings, and the other one enables live streaming, which once again isn't part of my repertoire, but now that I know it's there, I plan to look into that at some stage as well. I should also mention that from that main home screen, if you tap the three bar symbol at the top, it brings up a menu called Application Settings. I'll just draw your attention to a couple of items here. One says Firmware Update, and according to the Panasonic website, you can use this to update your G9 firmware without having to use a computer. That's an interesting one, and since I haven't done the 2.5 update yet, it's something I might look into soon. The other is notifications, and since I downloaded the app, my phone now receives notifications on various Lumix news, the sort of thing I used to only find out about on the Facebook grapevine, now coming direct to my phone from the source. So, I'm sure I've only scratched the surface of what this app can do. As usual, I'm not claiming to be an expert, just learning what I can and sharing what I find out. If you've been curious about the app but haven't given it a try, maybe this video is the little extra push you need. And I'll really look forward to reading the comments on this video to see what else my viewers can tell me about the Lumix Sync app. For now, I'm Andrew Goodall, this is Nature's Image Photography, thanks for watching.